Hey everyone, welcome back to Anna Nail School YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a while. I hope everybody is doing well. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I transform this short bitten nails into a beautiful set of uh, nails like this. So this is going to be an end to end transformation video. So watch till the end. And uh, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel and let's get into the video. So the first step of doing any kind of extension is to push back the cuticle. So here as you can see I am using an orange wood stick to push back the cuticle and I am exposing the dead skin around the cuticle area. So the dead skin around the cuticle area is the biggest enemy of any type of extension. If you wanted to have like a long lasting extension you must remove all the dead skin around the cuticle area. So I will be pushing back the skin around the cuticle area for all 10 nails and then I will be moving on to an electric file to do the dry manicure you can also use a hand file to do the dry manicure but i personally prefer an electric file which is fast and i can also reach the areas where a hand file cannot really reach so that's what we are going to follow For the electric file manicure, I am using a flame bit here with a red abrasive mark and I am going to use the machine for at least 18,000 rpm. So when we are doing the dry manicure using an electric file, one the right bit to the right speed. These two are uh, the most important thing when you are using an electric file for the dry manicure. Even for removing the products, it is very important we are using the right uh, bits and the right speed. So here I am using uh, my machine to a 16 to 18,000 rotations per minute speed and I am removing all the dead skin from the nail plate. Okay, so here another thing if you don't know how to correctly use an electric file for this kind of dry manicure, you are going to end up over filing the cuticle area and then when the nail grows out, you may see like a small or medium or big depending how much you have over filed the nail plate so you may see like a small ring of fire is what we call in the nail uh, you know uh, industry for that kind of damage caused by an electric file so make sure you are well trained before you use uh, your electric file for dry manicure so and whenever i am doing this i am removing the dead skin i am using my a brush to dust of the dust so that I can see where I have now left over uh, you know dead skin around that cuticle area then I can eventually remove that without damaging the nail plate I am also going to use the same bit to lift up that skin uh, cuticle skin or the epinecum area so that I have like full exposure of a nail plate and once this is done then I will be removing the surface shine of the nail uh, and then I'll be cleaning it with alcohol wipe and then we proceed with the extension processes Once I'm done with the dry manicure, I'm using lint-free wipe and alcohol to clean the nail plate. And you have to make sure that your nail plate is absolutely clean from dust, oil, uh, any remaining hanging skin, anything that you may have around or on top of the nail has to be removed and cleaned. And once this is done, you can start with a dehydrator and a primer.
For my client, I'll be using Mia Secrets Dehydrator and Primer before I apply the acrylic. After the primer, I'm going to fit my foam. So uh, the reason I'm using a foam is because we have like really short bitten nails. So it will be easy if you use a foam to build extensions on such nails. But in this nail, we can still go ahead and do a tip application and try to do extension. But I personally prefer foams when I have such small uh, bitten nails. And in general, I prefer foams over tips any day. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to quickly show you how I'm going to apply the foam. So first I just uh, measured the foam a bit and then I uh, marked the corners of her nails and then I did a cut so that the foam can uh, tightly fit underneath her nails. So here if you see we don't have like a long free edge for the uh, foam to stuck underneath the nail right. So when we are tightening the foam it should stick. Uh, stay there it has to be really strong and tight around that cuticle area even though we don't have the free edge to stuck our foam underneath okay so that's what I did so I tightened the foam and I check always always check before you close the foam if the foam is straight or not and once you're happy with the alignment you can they gently tighten the foam and when you tight it that's when we have to be a little bit more extra careful because that's when the foam is going to slip the position so just be very gentle especially when you don't have enough uh, free edge to stuck your foam into you have to be very careful when you're pinching and closing it okay Once I am happy with the foam alignment, I start with the product application and here I have already applied a clear base and extended the nail length and I think I forgot to record that part but uh, don't worry, I am going to show you another finger. So here what I am going to do is, as you have seen in the beginning of the video, two of my nails are like glass finished with some flowers encapsulated. So whenever we wanted to encapsulate something, we always put a clear base so that uh, you know it's 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 sandwiched in between so after doing that I laid a little bit of uh, clear acrylic so that the flower can stick to and then I arranged the flower the way I wanted so I'm basically trying to cover the free edge with the flowers and then once I'm done with this I'll be adding a little bit of glitter and then I'm going to encapsulate it with the clear Once I am happy with the placement of my flower and glitter and everything, uh, it's time for us to encapsulate the design. So before I am encapsulating the design, what I did was I just used the pusher to just gently push back the cuticle one more time so that I have like a really open cuticle area. So I picked up a small bead and I am going to encapsulate the glitter and the flower. So whenever we are encapsulating with acrylic, just make sure that we are not rubbing the brush over and over again over the, uh, you know, uh, acrylic because if you want a really glass like finish just use minimum strokes let the acrylic flow over your design and then just just gently let it you know guide it through the uh, area wherever you wanted to encapsulate and this way we can achieve a better glass like finish but at the end of the day clear gel uh, overpowers the glass finish uh, and uh, I personally like acrylic uh, gel is like I think it's a little extra work but acrylic I have like a better control so I can uh, maneuver it the way I want it so I prefer uh, using uh, clear acrylic to do encapsulations but most people they prefer uh, clear builder gel but anyways I have uh, technically completed the encapsulation process here and I also did the cuticle work and once this is done then we can move on to the next finger So uh, since I missed the first part of the previous uh, nail, uh, here we are. But in this nail, I won't be doing a clear or encapsulation. What I'm going to do is a ombre design. So for that, I chose model one's uh, glow in the dark powder. I wanted a blue uh, color, so I picked up this one, and then I realized this is a glow in the dark as well. And unfortunately, I forgot to click uh, videos and pictures of the glow in the dark effect. Uh, but I asked my client whether it's glowing in the night or not and she confirmed it does 
so uh, whenever we are working with uh, any kind of textured powder such as color uh, acrylic or glitter acrylic or any special effect acrylic for that matter uh, it's going to be a little tricky even though you follow the right consistency uh, everything right but still the product will be like a little tacky as you can see here even though the i'm giving enough time for the acrylic to sit there it's still like a little tacky and getting into my brush right so this may happen depending what color or what type of powder we are using and again if this will change brand to brand um, so just take your time let the product settle and then you can work your way through and here i'm not worried about uh, the thickness or the pigmentation or anything i'm gently working and uh, building the length and the shape of the nail and uh, uh, regarding the opacity don't worry about that we can always pick up another bead and build up that opacity so our first priority here is to expand the length and then build that shape what we wanted okay so take your time another tip uh, whenever we are working with colored acrylic or any kind of special acrylic for that matter uh, we lay down that base first and then uh, we do the ombre and then we encapsulate that colored area even if you don't encapsulate the nude color or the cover color that you are using you still need to encapsulate the uh, colored acrylic area color glitter acrylic any type of acrylic because when you file it the color acrylics and other glitter acrylic and all it may come off very easily and you may lose that final finish so it's best best to have like a encapsulation or a or a cover on top of it okay so in this video you will be learning like uh, two three different techniques um, with regards to acrylic extension one you have already seen how to do encapsulation and uh, this one i think i'm doing an ombre uh, effect so here what i did is i built that length and shape and then i'm taking a cover color to uh, form a ombre effect and remember our client has really tiny nail bed so this was not like a 100 percent perfect um, uh, ombre effect uh, so um, what I did was in this particular finger I laid the um, color and then I picked up a bigger bead which I used to cover the cuticle as well as to create the ombre effect normally when we do we take a small bead and first create an ombre effect and then we built up the uh, cuticle area but I did it in a different way here and I won't say I got a 100% perfect ombre effect uh, but uh, I was uh, kind of happy at the end of the uh, process so that's what I'm doing I picked up that bead I'm making sure my cuticle is like uh, nicely done and I'm expanding so you even though you do a little mistake you can still come back and fix it uh, so don't worry about that we will be fixing if, if we have like some uh, you know uh, damage kind of uh, missed points or anything that we may have the issues so I'm just fixing a little bit of problems here and whenever we do these types of extension we always uh, have to work a little bit different uh, finger to finger client to client nail to nail or sometimes product to product sometimes we only mess up so uh, that can happen nobody is perfect so uh, anyways uh, I'm just trying to fix whatever just tiny mistakes I was making here so I fixed it and uh, as I said after this I'll be using clear to encapsulate the uh, color acrylic here so that when I file it I don't lose all the colors okay so um, so far we have learned three different techniques and I'll be showing one more uh, uh, technique here where uh, the thumbnail uh, do not have any free edge so in such situation how we can use acrylic to build a free edge and then how to fix a foam or even for tips you can follow the same technique so what I'm doing right now is I'm using a, a clear acrylic to cap or encapsulate that color uh, uh, here so that when I file it I won't spoil the effect okay Now we have the thumbnail, here the thumbnail doesn't have a free edge so we need to build a free edge using acrylic. So here what I did is I used some tapes to pull back the skin uh, from that uh, tip side or the free edge side of the nails and then I used a, uh, this is not like a really ideal consistency. I 
picked up a dry bead and i am building that free edge using the acrylic so when you are doing this you have to be really careful with the consistency we can't go with like a liquidy consistency or consistency or like a super dry consistency so it has to be in between we should have the full control over the acrylic and then build that free uh, free edge like that so now i'll be doing this and then i'm going to fit the foam and build the nails here see i'm using my brush to make sure that the acrylic is not touching her skin and if you want you can also file and make it a little bit more thinner uh, uh, once the acrylic is completely dried so this is how we sculpt a free edge using acrylic Once I'm done with all the nails, I removed the forms and I started filing and shaping. So here we are going for like kind of a coffin shape. So I am filing and shaping and once this is done, all we have to do is to apply a top coat. Once I'm done with the filing and shaping, I'm using the same alcohol wipe, um, the lint free wipe and alcohol to clean the nail plate. You can also ask the client to go and wash their hands, not with the soap or anything, just plain water so that all the dust and everything is removed. And then you can start applying the top coat and seal your design. So here when I was doing this I also um, got to experiment with some with a new product uh, which is this top coat that I'm using so uh, normally the top coat that we use is called no wipe top coat and the top coat that I'm using is not a no wipe top coat so it is the regular it's a gel top coat only but it needs to be wiped after curing it otherwise there will be a tacky layer and when you wipe it with alcohol wipe that's that's when you are going to have that glossy finish and uh, when I was purchasing I did not pay attention to uh, this whether it's a no wipe top coat or regular because nowadays we only see no wipe top coat everywhere but uh, um, yeah so <laughs> the one that I go to was not a no wipe one so I applied it and then uh, I send it for curing for 60 seconds and after that I used a, a lint free wipe to uh, remove that uh, tacky layer from the top coat and then it brought out the complete shine and uh, the nails were done so that was another thing so basically this video has a lot of information i hope you guys are really enjoying it and if you like it don't forget to hit that subscribe button bell icon and leave some good comments so that i can you know get motivated a little bit more and make more videos so um we are almost done with the uh, application and everything now it's time for cuticle oil and then photography if you have survived this first thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon on my next video until then stay happy stay healthy i'll see you soon bye